This episode of Adventures in Alchemy is brought to you by the Moon and Magic Planner, 13 Moons of 2020. Plan on magic for 2020. Magic just doesn't happen. You have to plan on it. And this planner has plenty of ideas and spaces for creating magic. It celebrates the moons instead of the months. It follows the cycles of nature. It has pages to share your word of the year, your intentions, an oracle reading for the year. It also has spaces for your incantations, full and new moon rituals, working with waxing and waning moon energy, planner pages to script out your best year, and weekly pages that include the oracle of the week, along with the magical notes, spells, and recipes that you may be working with, or experiments, right? And also you can track all of your magical habits here because these habits really build up our own connection to magic in the world. And it's just brimming with magical energy for you to have the most magical 2020 yet. How many times did I say magical? Too many. But go to the show notes and check out the link or just go to www.dailyalchemy.com and scroll down to about the middle of the page and you'll find a big button that'll take you right there where you can see the brand new gorgeous cover for 2020. And welcome to another episode of the Adventures in Alchemy podcast. I'm Michelle Martin Dobbins, your host, the founder of DailyAlchemy.com and the Moon and Magic Planner. So today I want to talk to you about something sort of related to planning, which is magical time management. You may or may not have issues with time management, but I... As a mom of four kids, and I'm like, oh, do I get to say that anymore? My oldest is off in college, but I still have two border collies and a husband here too. So also two businesses that um, I work with, Daily Alchemy being one, and um, my husband and I's heating and air conditioning business being another one. So I, um, yeah, I go in lots of different directions. I've been having thoughts, and I have this thought quite often. Um, I homeschooled for several years, but this is like the first year for uh, like six or seven years. At, none of my kids are homeschooling. They're all like my daughter's off at college and my three younger ones are ones in middle school in eighth grade. And then the two older ones are in high school and I'm still driving them. My twins are 15 and then my younger daughter's 13. So I spend a lot of time driving my kids and sometimes I'll be like, you know, I could get so much more done if I just like paid some high school or college student to pick them up and drop them off. And like I get get like mm, lured into that, but I will tell you why I don't do it because I talk to my kids more when I'm driving them places than any other time of the day. They're captive. We have the best car conversations and so... I don't want to give that up because I know it's just going to be a few more years. Oh my goodness. My twins are turning 15 in two weeks. They're going to be driving. I am like, I don't know how I feel about it. Part of me is really happy. I loved it when my oldest daughter started driving and helped me out. But I do remember that like that first year is just like nerve wracking, right? Got to put the magical protections on the cars. So anyway, um, back to the, the topic of magical time management. There are so many freaking time management things out there, and I am a Virgo, Virgo son, so I love those things, right? I love planners, I love paper, I love charts and lists, lists. Oh, yes. My mother used to tell me when I was a child, and she's a Virgo too, but she used to tell me that... If I would just do the stuff instead of making the list of the stuff that I needed to do, I would get it. I would be done. And, you know, she was right, obviously, but <laughs> I still love to make some lists. Um, so, yeah, I may point you a little bit later on and tell you about the Moon and Magic Planner and how that can fit into it. But like everything I'm going to tell you right now, you can start doing today pretty much. 
and have it make some changes in your life. So I'm going to tell you what I do and like you're not me. So your plan will be different, right? Like there's no one size fits all for really anything in life. You know, when you go to the store and they say one size fits all on clothes, that is, yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to give you my rules and the things that have helped me. And, you know, here is my disclaimer. I have developed rules like this and thrown them out and developed rules like this and changed them and shift them. And it's an ever changing thing as life changes and I change and how I do things change. But this is a list I'm working with now. And it really came back after, as I was rebooting this podcast and like, you know, if you miss the things, yes, Michelle kind of went off the rails, took a big, deep break <laughs> from everything that she possibly could. And so then when I decided I really want to start doing these podcasts again and doing, spending more time working with people through Daily Alchemy, I had to get my time management back in hand. And so I have a five-step process that I've kind of developed over this past month or so. And it's similar to what I used before, but different. So and these are all in the show notes, so don't feel like you have to take notes. And also, remember, you get to make your own. So there will be an experiment for you and some, um, I want you to make your own magical time management set of rules. I have five rules, and I kind of feel like that's a lot. But I'm a Virgo, right? I cannot help myself. But, you know, I'd almost say make three. <laughs> make three. And then there will be like a bonus, a bonus one on there. Okay, so rule number one is magic first. It's hard. I know it's hard. It's so easy to get up on your day and like grab some kind of electronical device or just like jump into like dealing with what you got to deal with. Your day, my day, all our days will go so much better if we put magic first. And, you know, it doesn't have to be anything big or huge. It can be just as simple as, you know, like I like to spend a few minutes when I first wake up, I hit the snooze on my alarm and I sit there and intend for that, like whatever it is, nine and a half <laughs> minutes or something bizarre that it does, that I sit and just tune into my body, feel the energy in my body, feel how I'm feeling. And then, you know, lately I've been working a lot with ancestors, so I might be tuning in and kind of speaking with some of the ancestors that I work with. You don't have to do that. That's like my my first magic first. <laughs> and number three is kind of like that too, but let's go on. Just make time and you don't have to make time for magic like before you get out of bed. You don't even have to like if you're someone like me who takes kids to school and you're da 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 if you have a situation where you come back home after taking kids to school, you work from home, once everything's set up, you know, spend four or five minutes doing something, a meditation, um, and, you know, something that tunes you in for the day. Calling in the four directions is a really good thing to do to make a habit, but just some, like, focus on... If you want to live a magical life, if you want to deal with these things, to put it first in your life, because if you don't put it first, it won't happen. The second one is to enlist spirit helpers. And I'm seeing how like these first three for me can probably all be condensed into one, but I just put it out there this way. So enlisting spirit helpers, a lot of times for me, that's ancestors or different saints, archetypes planetary deities, things that I am working with currently, I'm going to ask for their assistance in making my day smoothly, get the things done that I need to do and be present and be a presence in my own day. So those things are, you know, I do call on that and I do see a big, huge difference. And if you want like really, really baby steps on doing that, there's a great book just, I think it's called... Oh, what is it? Calling on angels or something. And if, you know, you don't have to use angels, but I did this for a while and I just worked with like, if I was going on a family trip, I would say 
angels of connection and angels of laughter be with me in the car. Now that I've worked more with, you know, other things and I feel like close connections with ancestors that I work with or certain saints, I might call on them for the same thing. But, you know, start with what feels good to you. But um, I feel energy all around me. I feel spiritual presences all around me. And I've had some some experiences recently that, that tell me strongly that, that they want to help me, especially my own ancestors. And the next episode is going to be a lot more about ancestors. But if there are, are forces here that want to help us, I think we should invite them to do that. So yeah, that's my second one. And I guess that is part of magic first. That could be your magic first. And the next one that I'm going to say, <laughs> so one, two, and three are really kind of like co-mingling parts. Magic first, enlist spirit helpers. And the third one is daily discipline. And y'all, this is the one that I have ran from for so long. And when I really started doing this for the most part as a daily thing, I don't know, three or four years ago, gosh, it made such a difference. I mean, I've always had like, and okay, let me explain when I say daily discipline. I mean, physical real world discipline, because I had been pretty good for quite a while on doing a daily meditation practice, even if it was only five or 10 minutes, you know, a tuning in a getting quiet, some form of meditation at least once a day, usually twice a day, usually at the beginning and the end of the day, and then sometimes in the middle, depending on what I'm working on. But I did not see the value of a daily discipline of like doing an offering or um, calling the four directions or some kind of like something that required physical embodiment for me. And so I'm trying to remember and do this without making too much background sound, but um, I just want to remind myself, I'll put in a way, because I'm just bringing up calling in the four directions, I'll put my a link to my favorite way of doing that in the show notes, and also a link for the book. So anyway, <laughs> something like that, and you know, just light a candle, put out a bowl of clean water for the nature spirits. I really was always resistant to doing any of these kinds of things. I just didn't think I needed to. I always saw the um, benefit of meditating daily, right? But I did not see the benefit of leaving out a daily offering. And Carolyn Elliott, I took one of her classes and that was one of the things that every day for this whole three months period, you were doing this process of doing certain very simple offerings and it changed me it just brought my own focus in more and it just made like magical things happen to me more in my life it made my life more enchanted and just yeah it's one of those things I can't really express it but I promise you if you do it and you do it for like three months some very simple type of offering, you'll keep doing it because you'll see that it changes you on some kind of level, building up that discipline of doing that and just thinking of that every day. And then it also just changes how you interact with your environment, the seen and unseen, right? It, it changes like if you do it for the local nature spirits or for the land on which you live or the house in which you live, like, you know, I am a big believer in animism and that your house has a spirit. So if you leave out a bottle, like a bowl of water and an incense or light a candle and say, you know, this is an offering to the spirit of this house, please bless us, please keep this house peaceful and connected and whatever feels good to you. And you do that every day for don't do it for just a week, but because a lot of times I say, do this experiment for a week. Like whenever I deal with the premium members, we pick an experiment for a month. But yeah, do this for a while and you're going to feel like the energy shift in your house because your house likes to be known and appreciated. And if that sounds weird to you, I don't know. You might be on the wrong podcast, but 
if it sounds weird to you and you're willing to give it a try and see what happens, then you're on the right podcast because there are things that I've just been like, yeah, nope. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to give it a whirl and things happen. So yep. Now me going through the podcast pre-prepped for once and realizing that my first three really can be kind of honed all into one. I mean, like doing a daily discipline like that can definitely be putting magic first. And it can be a part of enlisting spiritual helpers. You can lay out an offering and say, thank you for however you support me, whoever you're laying the offering out for. And hey, help me get everything done that I need to get done today. And so the fourth thing that I like to do is a guiding question. And my guiding questions have changed over time. I'm always a fan of, um, not always, but since I read her book of uh, Marie Kondo's, what does this spark joy, right? And so that's what she's doing if she's trying to decide whether or not to keep something in her house. She's the one who does the declutter. But I like to, I've done it where I was just like, what next task would spark the most joy? And so for me, I have changed the guiding question that I'm working with. And right now what I'm working with is what is my next right action? So by guiding question, I mean, I have done my magic. I am set up like all the, you know, things that need to be done. I'm ready to be quote unquote productive during my day. And I've got my list, okay? You don't have to have a list, but I do have a list because I'm a Virgo. (laughs) But sometimes what pops in mind when I ask my guiding question is not something that's on my list. But the one that I'm working with now is what is my next right action? And so I ask that question, you know, I get still, not for a long time, just for a minute or two, look at my list and see what pops, you know, what, what stands out. And then I do that. Now, sometimes, you know, I don't have to ask that question really because like, what is my next right action? It's time to go pick up my kids for school, get in the car and go pick them up. So it's easy. But then sometimes when you're trying to figure out like the little Tetris game of how things are going to get done, sometimes doing this tuning in with this question throughout the day helps you be guided in a way that gets more of the little Tetris pieces in that need to be. (laughs) if that makes sense. So I wanted to tell you how I kind of came up with that guiding question that I'm working with now, what is my next right action? Because it may help you to come up with a guiding question too. And that's part of your experiment to play with. So I am a big fan of Enneagrams. I know I've talked about Enneagrams on the podcast before. That's some special kind of witchcraft right there. I don't care what what people call it. It is it's a magical thing. Brief overview of Enneagrams. Um, the guy who created them or downloaded them or whatnot, he he was a hypnotist first. And so he would hypnotize people. And then he realized like everybody's already hypnotized, but we all have our own little trap that we're hypnotized by. And we all have our own little quality that gets us out and wakes us up. And so there are nine personality types and, you know, it gets really detailed, but I'll put a link in the show notes for a place where you can do a free test and figure out your type. There's some really good books and things, and maybe I'll put some of those on my Amazon influencers page if I don't have them there already. But it can really, really be helpful for you to know this for yourself. And also like we've done it, my husband and I did it when we went to Sedona Soul Adventures. And then we had all of our kids take the test and like knowing these things about how their personality generally works is very helpful. So for me, I am a number nine, which is the peacemaker. Our trap is basically sloth, indolence, like just not taking action when we get stressed. We just kind of, and putting everybody else's needs above our own, spending more time on worrying about other people's issues. So the quality that wakes us up is right action. (laughs) So that's why I chose it. Now, my husband, on the other hand, he's a type one, which is a reformer. And their trap is anger And the thing that wakes them up is serenity. So he might, if he were going to do this, he might be like, you know, what would bring serenity into my life next? You know, what action would bring serenity into my life next? 
And that makes me laugh because our daughter, our oldest daughter is named Serenity, but actual, the quality of Serenity. So, um, you know, you might want to look at that when you're deciding like your guiding question to kind of keep you on track during the day and which project should you work on next? You know, obviously within the context of how much time and how much control you have over that, depending on if you work for someone else or how your life goes. But I find it helps me. I end up being much more productive when I do that than necessarily what I think I should do. But as I've said, this could be different for everyone because I'm a type nine and I tend to try to avoid certain things. I tend to procrastinate. So number five is one that I just recently added. I'd been doing kind of one through four for a while. And I went to a heating and air conditioning event recently. And dude, this guy said something and it just struck me. And it may not be as powerful for you as it was for me, but it will be for some of you. Some of you will be like, uh, okay, yeah. Like I was, I was like, mm. And he said, if something comes in your mind and you think, ugh, I don't want to do it. And he said, then you need to do it now. Now, obviously you can't always do that, but he's like, if you're like, I don't want to do the dishes, then stop and do it right now. Or I don't want to like write this blog post, then stop and write it right now. And for me, that has been, I've only been practicing this and definitely not a hundred percent, but I've been really, um, focused on implementing it for the past couple weeks since I went to this seminar and I'm like, whoa, I get so much more done because that kind of like, I think sometimes when I'm like, what is my next right action? I'm like, oh yeah, it's going to buy some flowers. You know, sometimes I can trick myself and lie to myself, but if I have something pops in my head and I'm like, I don't want to do it, I'll sit down and do it now. Or sit down and at least work on it now, right? Because I'm trying to get Shopify fixed and that's like, ah. So every time I think about Shopify, I'm like, okay, open it. See what you can do right now till you get stuck and then come back to it later. But that's really powerful for me. It's not, you know, not necessarily magic, but for me, it's a very powerful thing. Is And, you know, I feel like now that my brain knows I'm doing that, it's like the subconscious mind's like, oh, we want her to do this. We just have to like make her think about the fact that she doesn't want to and she'll do it. I don't know. It works out pretty good. So those are some of my rules for time management. And of course, the bonus rule is to use the Moon and Magic Planner. I'm pulling out mine right now. I'm really excited because I have a really cool new cover for the 2021. So if you haven't seen it, go to my Instagram or my Facebook or somewhere you will see the picture. And it's, I just, I, I love it because it's kind of like a nice big harvest moon on there. Just so pretty. Anyway, some of the things that I've put in here that helped me, like the reason I've created this planner was because I love planners, but I wanted one the A had all the witchy magic stuff in it that I like. Like every day it's going to tell you under the dates which planetary deity is ruling over that day. Moon for Monday, Mars for Tuesday, and so forth. It has a place for a weekly oracle. It has a little place for magical notes, recipes, and spells that you do that week that you want to make note of. And on the weekly page, the thing that is the most important to me is the magical tracker, which is where you can put in things that you're going to do, like your daily discipline, leave offerings or whatever it is that you do, like exercise. I try to keep track of like using the planner. I don't know. I love this planner, but I have to like really make it a habit. I love planners, but I'm I, like discipline for me is like, I'll use them perfectly for like a couple months and then I'll like get in a twirl and not use it. I mean, I have like meditate, journal, offerings, yoga, Portuguese practice, walk the dogs, earthing, Reiki, cleaning, supplements, you know, different things that I want to do on a daily basis. And obviously your list would be longer. I'm mean, longer, <laughs> not necessarily longer. Mine's pretty long, but just different and then there's a place to check off every day of the week whether or not you've done those so that's a nice fun thing to track what you want to do each day 
And I like to put a lot of self-care type stuff in there. And mine seems to change a little bit week to week. And then there's a monthly check-in page that has just like from the past moon. And it should probably say a moon check-in, but sometimes it gets wordy. But so this calendar does switch pages at the new moon. So there's 13 moons. And then you have your monthly calendar that has all the moons on it going from the new moon to the full moon. And then there's spaces for waxing moon intentions, waning moon nurturing, an incantation for the moon, new moon rituals and magic, and full moon rituals and magic. And then the check-in. There's so much stuff in here. I'm not going to sit and talk all about it on here. So you can go check it out. There'll be links in the show notes where you can pre-order. I think that I may, I'm hoping that I'm going to have some of them in by Halloween. I'll probably have a first ordering in by Halloween and a second ordering in by around Thanksgiving because I'm wanting to do some vending over the uh, Halloween season. So hopefully we'll have some for there. But that's, you know, having a planner that um, you can put your magical practice in to me is very helpful for my time management. And when you buy it, you'll get a free class that I give on like actually how to use it and get the most out of it and how to consecrate it because it's going to hold your energy and kind of its own energy too. So I got off on the planner tangent. So let's go to your experiment for the month. Basically, is to create your own magical time management rules. I've given you my five rules and... I would probably go with three rules. The caveat that I'm giving you is to include at least one metaphysical and one physical rule in your time management and a guiding question. So, you know, one thing that you do that keeps you on track magically, one thing physically, and the physical thing can be a magical thing too. It's just that like setting the tone and intention for the day. And I really, really like that daily discipline of doing some type of offering. And then a guiding question, like I said, you may want to look at your, your own Enneagram to get that, or just like whatever pops up to you. That's a good question for you to lead your subconscious to help you pick out what's the next step in your day. And then follow it (laughs) as much as possible. You know, like I'm giving you my list really good at doing the first three things. The next two, I'm learning. I used to use a guiding question a lot and I kind of slipped away from it. So I'm getting back into practice of using that guiding question. And I never, ever have been the person who if something comes in my mind that I don't want to do that I'm like, okay, I must do it now. That is a whole new ball of wax that I am training myself to do. So yeah. And then the last step is just reach out and share how it goes. You can find me on dailyalchemy.com. It's probably the easiest way to find where I am because if you go to the bottom of the screen, you can email me, you can Find me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. I don't spend nearly as much time on those platforms anymore, but I definitely do check in there at least two or three times a week. So there you have it. Go out and um, get some stuff done, some magical and otherwise. (laughs) All right. Have an amazing week and I will talk to you next time.